Hey everyone, in this video, I want to dive into the new multi-cloud migration capabilities available with Azure Storage Mover. Azure Storage Mover is a managed service and historically it's been focused on moving our storage from on-premises to Azure. So I could think about, well, we have our Azure target. We have some kind of storage account. And then we have our on-premises. And what the focus has been on historically is well, I might have SMB-based storage or NFS-based storage on-premises. And what Azure Storage Mover has focused on from the on-premise scenario was it required an agent. So I would have an agent running near to the data. And then if it was SMB, then that SMB via the agent, well, that could either go to Azure Files or it could go to Blob. If it was NFS via the agent, well, it could go to Blob. And we like to move our data into the cloud for if our compute is gonna run in the cloud, if maybe I wanna do AI services and new types of uh, embedding and vector search, maybe some of the other near to the service capabilities, well, hey, I, I wanna go and move that. So it's a really nice solution. But now you can imagine, okay, well, I have another cloud. So I have another cloud service, and previously, if I wanted to migrate from another cloud, let's say AWS and it's an S3 bucket, we would be using something like AZ Copy. I'd be using other command line tools. But then I'm doing all the management, the operations, the orchestration, worrying about authentication and key management, et cetera, et cetera. So the big deal here is Azure Storage Mover now supports other clouds for migrations into Azure. Now, it's starting with AWS S3 to Blob. And since it is a managed service, it's removing a lot of the previous complexity when we were doing that. Now, when I think about doing the migration, it is for online tiers, i.e. it's not from AWS Glacier, for example. You would need to rehydrate it first, and then you could do that migration. Now, there are some prerequisites to using the solution. So the first one is, it is building on top of Azure Arc. So I need the Azure Arc multi-cloud connector deployed and that AWS connection established. So I'm gonna have my Arc multi-cloud connector. So this is establishing the connection from the control plane of Azure, so the Azure Resource Manager. So this is this connection to an AWS organization, uh, to an AWS account. And I've covered this in previous video, videos before, but this is now giving the Azure control plane connectivity to the AWS control plane so we can do other things. So we can quickly take a look at that. So here I'm in the Azure portal, I'm looking at Azure Arc, and under management, I have my multi-cloud connectors. Now I've already set this up. If I go and jump over and look at my connectors, I select the specific one I'm using. And what I'm interested in here is this inventory. And I've also enabled the storage data management company in preview at time of recording. And again, for that, inventory selection, if I look at my solutions in detail, and if I edit for the inventory, the only thing I absolutely have to have configured is that S3. So once again, when we look at all of the different AWS services, while I have them all selected right here, I don't need all of those. This S3 is the only one I absolutely would have to have. So that is enabled so it can inventory them all and then sure enough, that storage data management would then be able to actually go and help me with these storage movement solutions. So as we saw, we've established that connection and what we wanted, remember, was the inventory 
solution enabled. And all we need is S3. You could have other ones if you want. We don't need them. And then that storage data management. And what those do is create the AWS CloudFormation stack and all the permissions required to go and now enable the connectivity from the Azure control plane through the multi-cloud connector into AWS. So that's the prereq we have to get in place. Now, the next part is, well, we want this Azure Storage Mover resource. So when we deploy that Azure Storage Mover resource, it deploys to a specific region. Now, you can focus on putting it in a similar region close to where the target storage is. It may optimize certain things, but you don't have to do that. I might create instances based on logical groupings of migration. So I would go ahead and create my storage mover resource. And let's just see that quickly. So here in the portal, we're looking at our storage movers. And really the only thing when I create one of these is the regular kind of subscription and resource group, a name region, but you'd also be able to set the monitoring. So this is where I would like that additional detailed verbose data on what's actually happening as part of the storage mover projects and jobs that I'm going to run. So now once you've got the resource, well, I would go and create N number of projects. So again, this is all about that logical grouping based on the things I want to do. And then within a project, I have a number of jobs. Now, the job is where I define, for example, what is the source? So hey, in this case, the source is this particular S3 bucket, and I can choose to have a sub path as part of that. Then I would have a destination. And again, I can have a sub path that it's going to go to, and then I'm going to have a mode. And what I actually dive in and see that. It's probably easier to just see this in action. So once you have your storage mover, I'm interested in this option of the multi-cloud migration. So I would select that. And then you can see, well, I would connect my AWS data source. So I've already created that connector, create the source endpoint. So that S3 bucket that we want to migrate from and then create a migration project that would use the endpoint and then create a job. Now, if I just go ahead and create a project, it would let me go and select the source endpoint and create it at the same time. So I don't have to create that source endpoint separately. But I'm gonna jump over to a project I already have. And this project will see a number of different jobs. And this will actually let me walk through the various configuration options. So you can see we have the source. So the source here was AWS S3. I'm using a particular multi-cloud connector. And then it would be my AWS account ID and the bucket I'm connecting from. And then the source sub path if I have one configured. So that's where I'm copying from. And then we have the target. So I'm copying to a blob container and then a blob container name. And again, I can have a sub path optionally if I want it. And then we just go ahead and have the migration outcome. Now, if we edit this, just you can see all these pieces. So again, it's the source configuration, target configuration, and then we have that migration setting. So I've got it in merge mode. So it would merge the content into the target but not delete things in the target that weren't as part of the source, or we can make it mirror. So if I mirror it, well then it will actually make that target look exactly like the source. So if the source doesn't have files that were in the target, it's gonna remove them from the target. So that's an important distinction to understand and what is the exact behavior I want. But once you've completed all that configuration, well now you would go and start the job. So this is a one-time execution. It'll get queued and then you'll see progress and it's gonna take as long as it takes. This is a service to service copy behind the scenes to move the data. It's not gonna use any AWS compute, but hey, depending on the number of files, the size of the files, 
well, that's going to impact the time it's going to take. And there you go. Now, one thing to point out is this target can actually be in any storage account, in any subscription within the same tenant that you have permissions to. And what it's going to write to is going to be the default tier that you've configured for that storage account. Now, you could go and change it after the fact, but that's what it's going to by default do. Another optimization this does is if I used AZ Copy to do this, AZ Copy would copy all of the data, even if it was just a metadata change. Azure Storage Mover would only copy the metadata change, so it's a lot more efficient. Now, these jobs, when it executes, is a one-time operation. If I wanted to keep it synchronized by running on the hour, well, today I would need to write a PowerShell script or something to keep rerunning the job. Now, I can run it as many times as I want, but that would be saying I would need to orchestrate today. And again, then behind the scenes, it's using this service-to-service -service copy behind the scenes to move the data. So there's no AWS compute involved in this. And it, it runs pretty quick. Again, we can go and look at one of these in actions. Now, if we look at the monitoring, we can actually see the last run. So we can see the amount of files and folders discovered. We can see the volume of data. And we can actually see the processing and the throughput. So what you can see here is it was pretty much running at about two gigabytes per second. So that's that service to service throughput. But it will vary depending on your data. If you add a huge amount of very, very small files, well, then it's going to take longer. It's not going to be able to copy as fast. Now, this is a free service. There is no cost for Azure Storage Mover itself. But that doesn't mean there aren't any costs anywhere. On the AWS side, realize it's data egress. So it's data flowing out of AWS. There's no charge for the data ingress into Azure, but on the AWS side, as it's exiting, there's likely a fee there. Now, if you are exiting AWS, I think there is a egress wave process that may remove that charge, but you'd have to check with them. Now, I would obviously pay transaction costs doing the reads on the source, and obviously I would pay for the right transactions right into the Azure storage, and then of course, the cost of the storage itself. So those, those would be things. Check the documentation for limits. Today, I think it's 10,000 objects at time of recording per job. Remember the job is the source and the target and the mode, but that's gonna increase at the GA timeline. It may continue to increase. So always just check documentation for what the limits are. Um, but there you go. It's actually a very simple solution. It's just building on top of Azure Arc. And it's going to let me now, without really any compute service involved, migrate today from S3 into my Azure Blob. Um, yes, there may be transaction costs on both sides. Maybe there's going to be an egress cost but there's no cost of actually using the Azure Storage Mover. It's fully orchestrated. It's a managed solution. So it makes it really easy to go and get your data into Azure. I hope that was useful. Till next video, take care.